Folks, thanks for coming on the line with us today. My name is John Dubos with Premier Senior Marketing, and we'll be spending the next 45 minutes or so discussing a marketing strategy of dealing with and working with and through providers that you come into play with in conjunction with networks on different Medicare Advantage programs and other providers that may not be part of a network as well. There are a number of reasons why you would want to market to and through providers. They're an important point of influence to their patients. They can be even more influential than family members. They can be a solid, trusted source of referrals for your business. And activity with different patients and clients can be very mutually beneficial. You can take a lot of pressure off a physician's office, and you can also deliver great service to their patients and clients and increase your book of business by doing so. It's also important to note that as you build your relationship with different providers, they themselves can be potential prospects and clients. If you look at physicians as a provider and a base to work with, if you're dealing with an established physician, these folks have a patient base that is in need of your services. And in many cases, they have a staff that is looking for help because they are quite frequently asked questions that are not within their realm of expertise to answer. And they are also then tying subject to different time constraints where if you are helping them, it frees their time up to do what they were hired to do. It's also important to note that these physicians may have personal need of your services. Two areas that come into play on a regular basis deal with disability insurance and life insurance. If a physician has been in practice for a number of years, they may have an old disability policy that may have been taken out when they first began practice and it, much like different property and casualty policies, is in need of an update and review. And that same mindset applies also to their life insurance. It is a program whereas the income from their grows, so does their need for income replacement to cover them and their family. Other Items that may come into play, if the physician is a member of a group or maintains a, a staff that he provides, he or she provides medical insurance for, you have another avenue that you need to pursue dealing with that particular office. There are also separate needs that a newer physician may have that an established doctor may not. And that includes a need to grow their, their practice, which you can be invaluable with. Um, rendering such a service not only enables you to work with their current patient base, whatever size it may be, but it also creates a reputation within the community and makes you a referable resource. It also, in many circumstances, means that the staff that is in play may not be as experienced and may be in need of your help in training and then creating a referral flow because of that. And once again, these are physicians that may be in need of your services for much the same reason they have with established doctors. They need to review their disability or life insurance, and it may be a circumstance where they are providing medical or other health benefits to their staff. Other providers that come into play include pharmacists. If you are active in the Medicare world, many of you may have been involved in working different retail settings with Walmart or with one of the other carriers that place you in a pharmacy during open enrollment or other time periods. These professionals are also in need of help and your services as well. If you're dealing with an established pharmacist, they too may be part of a chain or uh, have their own independent pharmacy, and they may have that huge patient base that's in need of your services on an ongoing basis. Because there are regular changes in different uh, programs for pharmacy assistance, this is a patient base that is in constant need of your services, 
And much like a doctor's office, their staff may be looking for help in dealing with that patient base as well. Additionally, pharmacists may have need of your services as well. They are generally fairly highly compensated, similar to a physician, but in a difference in physician, when you deal with a disability policy, many doctors already have disability policies that may require you to do a review in circumstances. Pharmacists may not have that coverage in place and may be in need of such assistance. They also may be in need of a review on their life insurance coverage and while any of these physicians may be part of a chain, it may be that you are dealing with a pharmacist that is in their own independent pharmacy and they may have need of medical coverage as well. Additionally, newer pharmacists face many of the same challenges that you see with newer doctors. They may have a need to grow their practice if they're not involved in one of the chains. They may also have a staff that's in need of training and in personal need of your services as well. If you look at a third area of providers that may be in need of your services and can directly affect your business, look to the dentist. They fall in many of the same need categories as you have with physicians and with pharmacists. They have a patient base that's in need of your services. In many cases, even a greater need than you have with um, the medical or pharmacy aspect because many of them don't have dental coverage and you can help in that regard. They too may have a staff that's in need of your help. Uh, a critical portion of this is through the delivery of different insurance programs for dental coverage, you are able to their account receivable to the department a great deal in making certain that you contribute to the financial viability of a dentist's office and they too may be in personal need of your services be they a newer or established physician and that same sort of thing applies to durable medical equipment providers home health care providers a number of organizations that contribute to the care of your clients and their patients. You can find these professionals in a number of different ways. There are a ton of lists that are available. Um, one of the, the simplest is if you work Medicare Advantage programs, simply pull up your provider directory. They list many of the providers, well they list all the providers that are part of that network and that gives you in many circumstances as complete of a contact list as you're going to find. You can also of course go to professional associations for such lists, work through Chamber of Commerce guides, there are industry periodicals that can be valuable to you as well. Many people will go and work with the purchased list route simply because that may give you additional ways of contacting that individual. Some of these lists may also include direct phone numbers or perhaps email contact listings as well. And then of course there's the joy of the internet where you have the, the lovely Google or Bing or whatever particular search function you choose to use that will enable you to pull a listing of professionals by type in a particular area should you choose to do so. And if you're one of the old-fashioned guys or gals, there is of course the ever-loving yellow pages that are available to you as well. There are certain things that may seem as though they are very remedial in the approach, but it's important to always stress the fundamentals, the blocking and tackling of any type of campaign. And that is if you're going to work with a professional, you need to dress professionally and do that very important thing that many of us forget to do when we get serious, and that's smile. Creating rapport and a relationship with the, the gatekeeper at the front desk is critical to your success because they, in many cases, control access to the people you need to speak to. It may not be the medical professional themselves, it may be the office administrator or the person that works with the insurance programs, but building that relationship with that first line of defense, so to speak, that person at the front desk is critical to your success. 
It is also important to note that you are a bit of an interruption to what their business is, their main function in any circumstance. And they see a ton of people, they schedule a ton of people, and it's important that we're polite and mindful of their time. Scheduling an appointment and being consistent and on time for those appointments can make a huge difference. It's also important to note that many times if you go into particular offices, they may have hours posted in which they see vendors. You are a vendor to them. In many circumstances, a Monday is not a good idea. And in certain circumstances, Wednesdays may not be a good idea either because they may be scheduled for time off at that particular point in time. Some different things that need to be considered is the type of approach and for what product that you're working with. And that might include programs that have different compliance restraints. Keep in mind that any time you deal with a medical professional and you're looking for assistance in accessing their patient base, you have HIPAA concerns, the privacy issues that you need to make certain that you are aware of and deal with properly. You also, in many circumstances, if you deal with the Medicare population, also have to be aware of different MIPA constraints that come into play. And being mindful of those regulations helps you with that first step, once again, of bringing value to the office gatekeeper. Those folks, in many circumstances, are aware that many tools are available online, but you helping them with access to different pieces of information can be the value builder that you bring to the relationship. So providing tools to make their job easier making certain that you do certain things to help them alleviate the pressure that they feel in dealing with things that may not be within the realm of expertise. It's also important to note that there are only so many things that you can do when it comes to ingratiating yourself with the staff. You can't outfeed a drug rep. You can't outsupply an office with pens or anything else in consideration with the different uh, pharmaceutical reps that are out there as well. So it's important to note that you think of things and work through them in your mind as part of an overall campaign. If you're one of those individuals who like to supply candy jars to a organization or a location that has your information attached to it, keep in mind one simple thing to do with that is provide sugar-free candy instead of regular candy. If you're bringing in refreshments, sometimes fruit is a better option than the infamous donut treat. So different things that you can use to be creative and distinguish yourself from other sales representatives help formulate that image that you make with an office gatekeeper and the staff itself. Some different things that you need to deal with as well if you are concentrating on one particular area if you're working with Medicare products, keep in mind that your focus may vary throughout the year. During the lock-in period, there are different things that you can do to be of great service to an office, and that is dealing with the agents that are working through the special election periods at any point in time, being knowledgeable about low-income subsidy or Medicare savings programs can make a huge difference as well because you're going to alleviate pressure on the request for asking for samples on uh, medications. It's also important that if you do that, it's a great way for you to also then help that doctor and the staff keep that person in line with taking the medications for whom they've uh, prescribed. It, it also can be a key factor in helping a doctor that's affiliated with a medical group to document that that patient is actually taking their prescriptions by going through the process, filling it through a pharmacy. It's also important to note that as an, import, uh, as an independent insurance agent, you have a portfolio of products that helps you offer the right product to the right person at the right time. When a person goes to a doctor or dentist or pharmacist, that pharmacist doesn't just look at them and say, wow, here's the bill for you. They go through an analysis, they go through a fact-finding, and you have those same sorts of processes available to you as part of the portfolio that you offer. Doing some simple things such as 
getting to know the staff, who is who, who deals with different departments, making certain that you keep that in mind and you do communication up front, address people by name, do some of the simple things of follow-up, that can help establish that relationship and make you different than anyone else who might be door knocking in that particular provider's area. You have the knowledge and the expertise and the tools available to you to help them through different situations. Many times a doctor's office or a dentist or pharmacist some challenges with uh, filings of different um, billings and things of that nature or questions about different types of coverage. Many times it's important for us to note that we're not a customer service rep, but having the relationships and the knowledge with the staff of the carriers and the knowledge of those particular programs of both the benefits and the back end member services can make a huge difference as to how you're viewed in that office. Are you extra work or are you a component that they can use to deliver greater care to their staff. There are also different providers that are looking to grow their practice and you being aware of different marketing opportunities in that provider's area make a difference on supplying that information to them so they can grow their practice as well. It is also important to note because you do have a full portfolio of products You can offer different things in different situations and there may be providers you run into that are not part of the network and need help of protecting their patient base in that same situation where they have then the opportunity for assistance in different drug programs you can help them stay abreast on or different medical coverages that you make available that may not be directly tied to a network. What am I referring to there? Well, many doctors and many offices will also look at their payer mix and say, hey, this carrier and, and I have a great relationship. We want to be certain that our patients are aware of the coverages that they offer, but there are circumstances with a number of our patients that a network-based program may not be in their best interest. And so having the information available on a number of different Medicare supplement programs and offering that same sort of review can make a big difference in how you're viewed across the board. There may also be, of course, different providers that aren't part of a network that need that overall assistance with other types of coverages that you can help with as well. Obviously, as part of your initial approach, you want to make certain that the people within that office, the gatekeeper and the other people that help make the decisions, know who you are, what you have as part of the value package you're bringing to the office, and the fact that you can help them on a year-round basis. That then makes you an invaluable source to them all of the time, so you can have a constant flow of prospects, but you're doing that by being mindful of the different needs that they have. And that may include working with people who are of limited income or being flexible with your product portfolio to make certain that you have the right product for the right person at the right time. And in doing so, you're going to earn the office's trust and consider this, then you are establishing the relationship with that provider as well and it may be that opening you need to deal directly with the doctor for their personal needs as well. It does also give you an opportunity to create a lead source for the staff. So there are a number of different ways you can work through the program and make it a year-round overall opportunity for you. In many circumstances, this involves much of what you do on an individual sales import, uh, appointment as well. You need to find out what is important to that individual and to the practice. There are different practices that are at different points in their development. Some want to grow their practice. Some want to maintain the patient base that they have. And that in, then dictates a need for you to be aware of different types of programs that you can do to help 
these providers that are in different stages of their career? Are they looking to publicize the, their office's services? What do they view as the office's key strengths? So you can speak to that provider's um, philosophy more succinctly and actually when you deal with people who need your help. Because keep in mind, in that particular circumstance, there may be a variation in answer to a question that is coming up with us here today, who is a key decision maker, that can vary. In many circumstances, if you're dealing with a practice that has multiple providers, they may have a different approach to their business practices, and it may be then that a lot of these decisions are based by a third party. It might be the office manager. It might be a firm that deals with the overall oversight of that particular location. Maybe they're part of a independent physician association and some of that decision making as to their marketing is delegated to that organization. That is an important part of the questions that you need to ask in order to determine who is the right person to speak to in order to really make certain that you're dealing with the practice on an overall basis to make it work. So that gives you then um, an idea as to do I deal with a doctor or do I deal with an office manager. For the most part, in many circumstances, the majority of the activity will be with office staff. Many of the physicians don't really speak to different benefits or um, the differences between the programs, and we'll speak as to why that is in just a little bit. There are different things that you can do, however, to make certain that you help the practice. In many circumstances, if you target a particular area, knowing about the different providers that are available in that area and some key differences helps you relay information to your prospects and clients on a knowledgeable basis, if I might put it that way. That way you make certain that you're helping match prospects and clients to a location that is proper for them. Many times that office, if they are looking to grow their practice, work in the community as well. And since you are ingrained in that community, you may discover different marketing opportunities that would be of help to them. And informing the office of those opportunities can really help them in their marketing activities and make a difference for you as well. And then it is a circumstance in, in in some areas where you can actually offer the office or the provider an opportunity to speak at different educational events. When you get into circumstances where you have a provider address your audience that you've drawn for one reason or another, you have to be mindful of the different MIPA regulations when you deal with the Medicare population because that affects the filings of the events that you are staging and it also makes a difference as to how you can collect different demographic information about the attendees. So you have to be really careful because if it makes it an educational event, keep in mind you can't collect demographic information, contact information from your attendees in such a circumstance. Simple basics of knowing who you are or what you have to offer can make a huge difference for you. So knowing your business, that sounds very remedial, but knowing the differences between the different programs and being aware of the different coverages that are accepted by a practice can make all the difference as to how you're viewed by that practice. You may not know that on your initial visit, but make certain that you visit with those in the decision-making process as to what makes different coverages important to that practice. And then being able to offer different pieces of information to support their structure, what they have in mind for their payer mix as to the carriers or, or coverages that they offer can make a huge difference. But knowing the basics on low-income subsidy and Medicare savings programs help regardless of the type of coverages that they have in play. 
it helps make certain that the account receivables for that provider stay in a cleaner flow and it also well it lessens the demands on the staff in many circumstances because if you have someone who is in a, a lower income bracket and they don't have the assistance in place they might be the demanding type for the samples for the medications and helping that individual be in line with managing their own prescription cost can help that office with that demand and once again help make certain that that doctor is able to document that that particular patient is actually adhering to the medic medical regimen that is put in place for that particular patient. It also is very helpful if you're aware of certain types of benefits that can help that office maintain their appointment structure. I know that sounds silly, but because of some of the different regulations that are put in place, the different demands that different providers have placed upon them when it comes to the number of patients they need to see per hour, let's face it, it's just a fact of life, having them make certain that they're there for their appointment on time makes a huge difference. So if you're dealing, for example, with a Medicare Advantage plan, more specifically in many circumstances, dual special needs plan, many of those programs offer transportation as one of the ancillary benefits. Having that staff be aware that that patient has that type of benefit can help make certain that they keep the appointments that they put in place. So it can make a huge difference on how you can affect the flow of that practice as well. It's also important to note that as an independent insurance agent, you have the variety of products to offer, and that staff will then know that you are looking out for the best interest of their patients as well, in addition to their best interest, and it helps you then tailor a proper diagnosis and help their patients with programs that can best benefit all involved. There is, of course, the strategy of leaving behind a package. That might include your business cards. Now keep in mind, in a Medicare situation, the staff is not supposed to pass out business cards, so that's something to be uh, aware of, but having them available in common areas um, can help you deal with that situation, making certain that they have a knowledge kit as to the different programs that are available, sometimes a, a updated formulary or access to it can make a difference if you're dealing with primary care physicians, who are the specialists that are involved in programs, specifics about the benefits themselves, online contact information for the plans, which you can get and make available. It, really simplifies the process for that office. Keep in mind, many of these pieces of information are available online. Keep in mind, many of the folks in the office won't go online each and every time. They'll grab a guide and look at it on a manual basis rather than do the use of the internet. You do also have the opportunity to do specific flyers to make available in uh, the areas where it's permissible. Keep in mind, you can't leave anything behind like that without the staff's permission. So it's important that this is all part of the conversation that you're having with the group and the gatekeeper and the decision maker to make certain that your information is used as well as left behind. Getting filed in that round file doesn't do you a bit of good. Some things that can differentiate you as well is once you visit with the individuals, do the ever-diminishing practice of sending a handwritten thank you to those that you've met. When's the last time you got a thank you card? Well, just past graduation, uh, I had a couple nieces that sent me one. But on uh, a general rule, you don't get them very often. And it can really distinguish you from other people that may be dealing with that business. Being consistent in your visits and making certain that that staff is aware that you are there to support their business as well can make a difference. So make them aware of the fact that, hey, 
you've sent people to them. Here's some different people. I want to thank you for taking care of my clients as well. One of the greatest feelings I got in individual production is when I dialed into different doctor's offices and in many circumstances, well, the majority of the circumstances, you don't talk to the provider. You're talking to their answering machine or their answering service, leaving a message saying, hey, Dr. Smith, this is John Dubas. I offer a number of programs um, that help your patients deal with the costs that they're faced in receiving services. And I just want to thank you for the way that you take care of my clients. If I can ever be of help to you, just give me a call. 214-450-9639. You'll be amazed how many folks will actually call you back and say, hey, I, I want to chat with you. Let's find out a little bit more about you because you've done something different. And everyone likes to hear thank you. So it's a great way for you to then go into the conversation of, you know, well, I'm, I'm working to support your practice anyway. There are a number of patients that I've sent your way and I appreciate the way that you deal with them and go from there. It's a great foundation for a strong relationship. Doing so on a regular basis reinforces that message and of course you don't want to be a pest but doing so consistently makes all the difference in the world. There are certain things that you have to be aware of if you're working with a provider and you are dealing with a Medicare delivery system. It's important to note that the marketing guidelines given to us by CMS notes that providers are responsible to ensure that all Medicare Advantage plans they represent have an opportunity to display their materials. That doesn't mean they have to call each of those companies and say, hey, I need some of your flyers to put up in my office because I need to make certain that folks know everything about everything. But if you go into a particular office and you're aware that that doctor offers coverage through multiple carriers and one or another is shown and not the others and you contract with the other carriers, it is the opening for you to volunteer to be the source of material for those other carriers. It's a door opener to make certain that they speak to you. And it's also important, once again, to make sure that you are delivering that information on a basis that can be disseminated to their patient base. So many circumstances, what I recommend is some of the carriers will have a generic type of flyer that announces you as an agent offering multiple coverages for an individual and it does so on a generic basis if the provider displays that type of material they're not doing something specifically for one carrier or another they don't have to worry about all that material being displayed and they don't have to worry about a whole bunch of different insurance agents displaying that material either you are their go-to individual Once again, we have to be certain that we follow the guidelines sent to us by MIPA and the different regulations that they have in place. It's important to note, no sales activities can be conducted in the healthcare setting except in common areas. Marketing is prohibited in areas where the patients receive care. That includes a waiting room. Technically, that is laid out as an area where someone receives care or a patient room. So we have to be careful about what we do. And keep in mind that providers cannot endorse or steer attendees to a particular plan. That's part of the MIPA regs as well. Having an agent that is independent and offering a number of different programs can help them make certain that they abide by those sorts of topics because they have a refer referable source of truth for the programs that they are involved in. It's also important to note that the government keeps this in mind because providers are not generally licensed individuals. They aren't aware of all the plan details that you have to go through in the course of a regular presentation and they want to make certain that the information is delivered in a manner that doesn't steer. So we have that opportunity by independent agents and offering multiple programs. It's also important to note 
that it's inappropriate for a provider to be involved in any of these actions. Offering a scope of appointment, setting up appointment forms, things of that nature. The provider cannot do that directly on your behalf. They cannot mail marketing materials on behalf of the plan, except in certain circumstances that we'll talk about in a bit. And it's very careful, they have to be very careful about making telephone calls or steering patients in any way. So one of the things that obviously you would want to do is help control some of the information that goes into a particular office, and that includes pre-sales kits. Obviously, sometimes individuals, okay, I'll take it from my doctor. That way I know it's a trusted source. The doc can give me the pre-sales kit. Well, if they're offering those kits, they're not supposed to have applications within them, so they need to make certain that the material that is being distributed is compliant as well. There are certain things providers can do, and they can provide the names of the different plans or Plan D Part D sponsors that they participate with or contract with. They can help in providing information and assistance in applying for LIS. You have certain medical groups that actually have social workers on staff that help do that. You being aware of those particular programs and being able to offer that service will transfer that burden from that particular provider. It's an invaluable way of ingratiating yourself with a particular location. Um, they have to be really careful about how they communicate uh, assistance, but they can make certain that they have the information available to um, different plan representatives, state health insurance programs, Medicaid offices, the Social Security office. You can actually be the individual that helps them supply that information, be that source of information. And, of course, making folks aware of the materials that are available on Medicare.gov can really, really help you make certain that the material you're delivering is compliant as well. There are different things that a provider do on specific locate or on specific occasions, and that includes announcing new or continuing affiliations with different programs to their patient base. If a doctor wants help in doing that communication, keep in mind they cannot give you a list of their patients. Well, they can, but if they do so, they're violating HIPAA regulations. Um, so it's important to note that any type of announcement needs to be done by the physician or the provider, and it's important that the procedure they go through follows one that protects the integrity of that personal health information can be some great challenges if that is leaked or um, the security is breached in, in uh, working with their patient base in that manner. So we got to make certain that those uh, patients are protected. There are different things that a provider can do to announce their SNP affiliation, a subset of the Medicare programs. And that's particularly important when you deal with the dual SNP population because not all doctors deal with um, folks that are eligible for those programs. There may be doctors that do not accept Medicaid that do accept a dual special needs plan. So being aware of that circumstance and helping that particular provider deal with that population can be a great way of being of service to that provider as well. It's important to note as well that you have that portfolio of products available to you. And because you do, you can also help with folks that have different types of coverage that need evaluation. We deal a lot with, okay, this doc is a network provider for a Medicare Advantage plan. Well, that circumstance may not be one where that plan is in their best interest if they have different providers that aren't part of that network and they may require your help as well then to do different types of analysis to benefit that patient. Drug plan analyses, um, programs that help you evaluate different Medicare supplement programs. So being aware of the different programs that are available to that patient base and being able to deal with them can make a huge be a huge advantage to you. 
and that allows you then to be that source of information, not just for a health plan, but for medical coverage, through prescription coverage, or other programs that may be appropriate for that individual. You can host camps at different locations with a provider's uh, permission, of course. It has to be done in a common area with that practice's permission. And as I mentioned before, you need to make certain that you have permission from that location to leave different pieces of material. So it's not one of those drive-by, drop-off information types of things where you're leaving information about you and your, your insurance practice with everybody that's part of a network. If you don't have your permission, you can't do it. So it's also important to note that if you telephone referrals, you're making unsolicited contact under MIPA guidelines, and you could be subjected to corrective action by following up on a referral on that basis. It's important to have the patient call you, and you can do so by making the appropriate marketing material available to that clinic to be placed in common areas. Once again, being aware of how that practice operates and the different ways of how they pursue additional business or wish to maintain business can make a huge difference as to whether or not your relationship grows with that location and that it's fruitful for both of you. Keep in mind these providers are a source of year-round activity and they're going to work with you if you're able to deliver things that are of value to them. Some of the different niceties, well, keep in mind you can't outspend a pharmaceutical rep, so there are different things that you have to be aware of as to how you can differentiate yourself from other folks, but celebrating holidays, knowing birthdays, knowing who is who and when things are done can make a difference in developing your relationship with that particular provider. An important part of making certain that they know who you are and what you deliver is by delivering on what you promise them and making certain that you follow up with the different questions or concerns that they may have. It may involve you dealing with the carrier to act as a go-between. Keep in mind you're not a customer service rep, but being a conduit of getting the answers that they need can make all the difference in the world as to whether or not you become part of their family of delivery of care. There are circumstances where you're going to deal with a difficult or upset office. It's important to remember, to remember it's not a personal thing. You listen, you document, you respond, and you deal with the carrier that has part of that challenge to make certain that that office knows you're an advocate on their behalf and that you are not an employee of the insurance company. Don't pretend to know all the answers. Get answers as you can and make certain that that staff knows that you're involved in the process of resolving the issue they have in, in, uh, in play. If you work with specific carriers in uh, the Medicare Advantage network situation, make certain that you know about that carrier's provider service department and the people within that organization who do resolve those issues and make certain that you follow up on them to be a valued source of assistance to that office. Keep in mind that same mentality deals with whatever type of provider that you are dealing with. They all deserve the same type of support and respect and you can build your trust and earn their respect by doing what you say you're going to do and doing it consistently. Many of those same aspects can be applied when you come to dealing with a pharmacist. If you work retail in the open enrollment periods and those of marketing initiatives are not available to you on a year-round basis, make certain that you maintain that relationship throughout the year by periodic visits to that location and making certain that that staff knows that while you may not be in that particular pharmacy year-round, you are available to them year-round and offer the same assistance with the questions on the different coverages, 
the information you have available on low income subsidy and Medicare so, uh, savings plans, but if you're dealing with different chains, be prepared for corporate because in many circumstances, what you can do during the open enrollment and what you can leave behind during lock-in can be two different sets of information. The same sort of value that you bring to a doctor, you're bringing to a pharmacist. And that same type of mindset needs to be in play. In many cases, a patient will see a pharmacist or a pharmacy more frequently than they do their doctor. So they'll go in and they'll do their renewal of their scripts and the different things where I may not be in the same timetable as is required by the physician. So accessing pharmacists on a regular basis and making certain that you are of value to them helps you with that patient flow throughout the year on a more consistent basis. In many circumstances, the marketing tools that you use with a doctor may be the same as what you use with a pharmacist or even a dentist, but there are different programs out there with multiple carriers that allow you latitude with a dentist that you don't have with a pharmacist or a doctor in dealing with the Medicare market. You have different requirements that are placed upon you when dealing with a dentist, more Likely than not, many of the marketing re restraints are less restrictive when you deal with a dentist, and you have multiple carriers that you have available as part of your portfolio there as well that may be outside of a formal network type of basis. So you're dealing with things on a fee-for-service basis, and it allows you then to help that dentist market effectively and help with their accounts receivable. This is an example of one of the carriers and part of the marketing forms that they have available. Medico does a ton of things to help you market with physicians. You also have the same avenue of marketing with dentists as well. And this is an example of that. And many of the special needs plans in the dual beneficiary market pursue relationships with dentists as well. So that's something to strongly consider even if you don't offer dental programs. You kind of do if you deal with the dual SNP or in many cases regular MA programs that offer dental coverage. Once again, a reminder, you've got a full portfolio of products that you can use across the board with all sorts of different providers that enable you an in and a way of having multiple revenue streams coming into your insurance practice. Take advantage of them. The key points to remember when you market with providers, be honest, be respectful, be of value to the patient, be of value to the practice, and remember those magical words of saying thank you make a huge difference. What we would like to do is help you in your programs in dealing with the provider population. There are different leave behinds that we have available in dealing with the different carriers and the different products that are available. There is also a leave behind that we can adapt and personalize to you that you can leave behind with a provider, a decision maker within a provider's location that can go multiple places, get you referred across multiple providers, and has your information personalized. So to leave behind you are uh, using to advertise your services. We want to help you pursue that business. So in order to become involved in these sorts of er uh, programs, it's the old plan your work, work your plan. Decide that this can be a key function within your personal marketing plan. Make the decision to market in such a fashion. Be prepared with the proper portfolio in order to make it successful. So you got to contract, certify, study. This point in time of the year, you have a ton of information coming to you from different Medicare Advantage and prescription drug carriers asking you to do their certifications. Do them, plain and simple. It can be a pain to have to do them each and every year, but it's a great way to keep up on stuff, and it's a great way to be better at your craft. Once you have those in place, go out and actively market. Create your plan on a target area and 
the old don't procrastinate. It's the, the Nike slogan of just do it. That said, there are a number of national marketers within our organization that can be an asset to you in helping create such programs. These are some of the different national marketing uh, managers that you have for uh, locations across the country and you have staff available with these different um, areas as well. And you can get in contact with any of us through the primary contact number of 1-800-365-8208. Please do so. That said, I want to thank you for the time that you have spent with me today. Today's presentation has been recorded and a link to that recording will be sent to you as part of the follow-up to today's presentation. We appreciate the relationship you have with our organization. We look to deepen that relationship and we look forward to speaking with you in the near future. In the meantime, we wish you good selling.